what the Mueller team is doing is trying to determine whether or not the engagement rises to the level of criminal conspiracy, whether they violated the law. You can collude without violating the law. And I know the Senate Intelligence Committee came out and said they found no direct evidence of criminal conspiracy, but that's not the Senate Intelligence Committee's remit. It is the FBI and a special counsel's team to do the criminal investigation. And welcome to this Wednesday edition of America Talks Live. Remember, we take your phone calls. We're taking them today and every day. Give us a ring, 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. Now, that was just former CIA Director John Brennan that you heard from there. Brennan says it's not Congress's job to find out if the Trump campaign colluded with Russia. Now, the former CIA Director and big critic of Donald Trump, also a big crony, of Barack Obama added that the job falls with special counsel Robert Mueller. Now, this all comes after the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Richard Burr, said that the committee hadn't found any evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. However, ranking member Democrat Mark Warner said he disagrees with Burr, but that he's not going to reach any conclusions until the investigation is wrapped up. And that's where I want to welcome in former federal prosecutor, Larry Clayman, he's also the founder of Freedom Watch and a good friend of the show. Larry, good to see you. Good to see you too, John. Now, let's be honest here. Burr was a big never Trumper. Burr was never a fan of Donald Trump's. He's a Republican, but he fell on the Jeff Flake, John McCain side of, of the GOP with regards to Donald Trump. So it's a pretty big statement when Burr comes out and says, all right, time to put this to bed. There's nothing here. There's no evidence of collusion. What do you make of it, Larry? Very big statement, John. He's now said it twice. So there's no mistake that he said it by accident the first right, time. Right, right. And you're right. He's a never Trumper. He has a state that's going Democrat. So he's been pandering to the Democrats. That's why he basically colludes himself with Senator Mark Warner, the ranking member. And that's how this thing went this far. So it looks like he's broken with Warner on this and wants it to end. But the problem is this. And I know because I'm dealing with uh, an individual by the name of Jerome Corsi, who was subpoenaed by that same committee. Right. And they should stop that investigation. At this point, it's simply harassment of Dr. Corsi because they found nothing. But Warner wants to trudge on like the Japanese after World War II in the jungles of China. And it's simply theater of the absurd at this point. You know, I've said that many, many times. I like those Japanese soldiers in 1970 who still thought the war was going on. It is a bit ridiculous. Right. right? Let's play a clip of Fox News is Tucker Carlson. Now, Tucker is calling on all Republican voters to oust any GOP members of Congress who support Mueller. Listen to this. We can have someone who, can't, who literally can't be fired in the middle of a Democratic Republic? How does that work? Republicans push that. Someone who's literally unaccountable, who nothing can be done to, who has all the powers of the CIA and all the powers of the FBI, and Republicans sat there and said, there's nothing we can do about this. So, so why would anyone vote for people like that? I mean, seriously. Right. So if you have one side that's perpetuating what is a transparent fraud and causing the wheels of government to grind to a halt and things like a rising suicide rate to go unacknowledged because no one has the disk space left to think about anything but Russia. If you're playing along with that, why would Republican voters vote for you? And it's important to note that Tucker Carlson there, Larry, was talking to Molly Hemingway. Molly Hemingway has done outstanding work at The Federalist exposing the Mueller investigation, but and, and all of its hypocrisy. But Tucker makes a good point. Why would anyone at this point vote for any politician on either side of the aisle, Larry, that would give somebody, anybody, not just Robert Mueller, the unfettered power that this special counsel has? It's terrifying and it's un-American. What's interesting, John, is that they're willing to introduce legislation, including the new head of the Judiciary Committee in the Senate, Graham, Lindsey Graham. Right to save Mueller's skin and to keep him in power. So that would seem to presume that they also have the ability to introduce legislation to get rid of Mueller. And you're right, they have no guts. And look at what they've done now with this border deal. I know you're gonna talk about that later, but this is, you know, frankly, a mockery of a sham, of a tragedy of a sham. I mean, it, it's no deal at all. If the president takes it, I think he's making a mistake. He should go to a national emergency because you can't be a little bit pregnant. You can't say, okay, I'm gonna accept the money and then take money from other parts of the Treasury. That's not going to work politically for him and probably not legally when a case is filed in the Ninth Circuit. So he should simply reject it. I don't think he should shut the government down, but just declare a state of emergency and do what he needs to do. But this is typical of Congress 
And yesterday, with regard to this border deal, before the president even had a chance to look at it, you've got this new minority ranking member in the House, Kevin McCarthy, whose IQ must be about 80. He was undercutting the president, saying it's a great deal. Now, why would you do that to your Republican president and lay it out in front of him so he's going to look like a jerk if he doesn't accept it? Jerk at a minimum. Well, yeah, you know, the conundrum Trump has right now is does he get labeled as causing another shutdown? Because the mainstream media is never going to blame it on the Dems where they should. Or does he take the deal and then nullify the Democrats' power by simply issuing the executive order to fund the wall? And you're right. He might might, might be over. You know, that might be stayed in the Ninth Circuit. They might injunct that executive order. But it's something that might need to go to the Supreme Court because I want to get your opinion on this, Larry. Wouldn't Congress passing a law to either fire or protect Mueller, commingle, infringe upon the separation of powers. The special counsel is an executive branch function. Which gets back to the president himself. He has the ability to get rid of Mueller. And one would hope right. that the new attorney general Barr will clip Mueller's wings at a minimum, but he won't because Barr is an establishment person. And to get confirmed, he had to lay down and bow down to Mueller in the first place and say, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. My wife goes to Bible study with him. He's an old friend. I mean, this is the way it works in Washington. But get back to the first point is that the president should simply reject the deal and impose uh, emergency funding here as an emergency. Like I said, you can't be a little bit pregnant. You can't take the deal and then, you know, seek to take monies from other parts of the government. That's not going to fly. And and that's kind of like an admission that Congress has solved the issue. And that's why strategically, he should take a hard stand here. He does not have to shut down the government. That's not going to happen. Right. But he can do this other alternative route. All right, Larry, let's move on now and talk about Michael Cohen. Now, Cohen, this is, of course, Trump's former attorney who pled guilty to a bunch of various things and is supposedly cooperating with special counsel Robert Mueller. Now, Cohen was supposed to testify before the uh, the Senate Intelligence Committee yesterday. That was going to be private closed door testimony. But Cohen postponed due to what he says are health reasons. Here's what Chairman Burr had to say about that. He's had a letter for six months asking for his return. Um, He's already uh, stiffest on being in in Washington today uh, because of an illness, yet uh, on Twitter, a reporter reported he he was having a wild night Saturday night eating out in New York uh, with five buddies. Didn't seem to have any physical uh, limitations, and he was out with his wife last night. Now, there's clearly a reason that Cohen isn't going into the committee. What do you think that is, Larry? Why do you think Cohen's not testifying? Well, it's obviously, that he, doesn't, he doesn't want to be forced in a perjury situation again or to take the Fifth Amendment. Right, Larry, That's let clear. me ask you about this. Why isn't everybody, and I mean everybody, who's speaking to either Mueller or these committees, why aren't they pleading the Fifth? They're going to be painted as guilty and traitors and colluders with Russia no matter what they do or say. But why aren't they, they protecting themselves by I mean, taking the fifth? That's, yeah, that's the alternative at this point. If they get forced into it, that's what they should do. But on the other hand, uh, they can simply refuse to comply, as Andrew Miller did, one of the witnesses, and go into a contempt situation and take this matter all the way up to the Supreme Court, if possible, at least to the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. And that'll, be, that'll drag on so long to go through that process that even with Mueller continuing on with this jihad, it'll probably be over by then. So I would recommend they go into a contempt situation if forced into these testimonies. We're trying to avoid that. Larry, let me ask you this, though. Do do you see any conceivable scenario where the D.C. Circuit, the United States Supreme Court, I don't care if Trump gets two more justices on the Supreme Court, any scenario where the high court would render a congressional subpoena null and void? I just don't see them doing that. You're, you're right, John. That's hard to believe. But what you do is, as defense counsel, I mean, it's no mistake, it's no secret, is to try to put things off as long as possible. Look at David Kendall, who represented the Clintons and still does. He right. was quite successful. You just delaying everything. I'm not giving my strategy. I'm just telling these other witnesses what to do, because I depend on what a client tells me to do. But just let the events take its course, drag it out, and I think all of these things will be gone. But... You know, the reality is here, you go in front of Congress and they're going to compare what you say with what you said to the being the witness to the special counsel 
and then you'll wind up putting yourself in, in legal jeopardy. I mean, you've got three moving parts here. You've got Senate intel. You've got House intel, which is rabid leftist congressman Adam right, Schiff right. from West Hollywood Council. And therefore, basically, it does not pay to testify in front of Congress. All right, Larry, before we let you go, and I've got about a minute and a half left for you, I want to talk about your investigation into Adam Schiff's finances. Tell me a bit about that. We've just commenced it, and we're working on it. You know, Adam Schiff has now gone on this witch hunt to get into everything into Donald Trump's underwear, so to speak, uh, with regard to finances. Now, let's look at his finances. You know, what he reported to the House of Representatives, they have to do disclosure forms, what he and he reported I, oh, to the Federal Election Commission. Let's take a look at it, and let's investigate it, and let's see what we find, and let's investigate Adam Schiff. What's good for the goose is good gander. All right, Larry. And we're going to do that at Freedom Watch, by the way. Freedom Watch, USA.org. FreedomWatchUSA.org. Larry Clayman, former federal prosecutor. Sorry, we had a bit of an audio issue there with Larry at the end. Always great to see him. 